1600 KIVA, 93.7 FM, the web, the app, rockoftalk.com. I'm Eddie Yerga on the Rock of Talk here with my good friends and number one real estate agents here in New Mexico, Tigo and Tracy Venturi, the Venturi Real Estate Group from Keller Williams Realty. You can pick up the phone and dial them directly, 448-8888. That's 448-8888 or welcomehomeabq.com. That's welcomehomeabq.com. And folks, we're looking ahead to 2021. And uh, Tigo and Tracy have a uh, wealth of, let's just say, transactions in their past, which are going to help us prepare for 2021 so that we could look at some of what's happened, not just this year, but also, you know, the past 12 years. If we go back to 2008 and uh, we're embarking on a brand new territory, almighty low interest rates, and uh, it is uh, uncharted waters. And Tigo and Tracy are going to give us their, their best advice uh, looking forward, not to mention their homes of the week and uh, open houses, uh, as well as much as open houses can be open uh, during this uh, pandemic. Team Tigo, Tracy, good morning. Good morning. I don't morning. think I want to touch open houses. I just got off. Uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> at the moment, just so you know, open houses are a sort lot, of. sort of a lot. I mean, they're allowed. It's not very specific. However, the, uh, the the feature in the MLS that helps promote open houses is is turned off right now. Um, you know, I think I, if, the, the reality is the real estate agents and and you know sellers and and buyers. I mean, I think pe- we've been in this long enough that that people know what the right things to do are and and uh, you know haven't heard of any issues with it. But virtual open houses are a thing, and we can we can definitely uh, delve into that. But um, and you guys have that great technology as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the it, Matterport, the virtual uh, walkthrough, immersive I mean, walkthrough experience. The, the, the reality is, the market is what's the right word? Insane. I don't know. I don't know what the right term is. I mean, the mar- the real estate market in Albuquerque. I'm sorry, I jumped right in here. This is Tigo, and we're here with Tracy. Venturi, Venturi Realty Group, Keller Williams Realty. We can be reached at uh, 505-448-8888. But the market is like we've never seen before. You know what's most unusual about the market, Tigo? Tell me. It's a seller's market and a great time to be a buyer all at the same time. It's usually one wait, or wait, the other. Wait, wait, You're a real estate agent. Of course you're supposed to say that. No, so no, really. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, yeah. it, when you think about these these interest rates, right? And Locking the affordability. in the affordability of homes right now. Even if you bought a house today and a year from now right. it went down ten thousand dollars, but wait, interest wait. rates went up, you're still going to be having that monthly payment that's probably better than uh, what it would have been if the I, house price were lower. I have a quote for that. So this is oh, from uh, Black Knight uh, Mortgage News Daily. Like Black Black Knight is one of the the companies that does the software. Like if you pay your mortgage, a, a, a mortgage servicer and the online systems that you pay, it's a good chance that it's Black Knight software, the back end. So they wow. do a lot of mortgage analytics. They do they do all kinds of stuff. Anyway, I mean, if you want to like take a, a wonky, can you view, just read? No, the I can't. Quote? I oh my can't. gosh, you're driving me crazy. If 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 you want to <laughs> just keep talking for 15 minutes yeah. and we won't even remember to tell the yeah, quote exactly um anyway if, if you really want to d- dive deep and this is the type of stuff i read is is black knight puts out um, market reports every month very deep dive into what's going on in the with with so if you want to know like the forbearance and the delinquencies and the dot the dot the dot that that that's what they do anyway you're gonna okay. get to the quote i'm gonna get there i'm getting there i'm almost there for uh, So this is what they put out. It says, those shopping for a home can afford 10% more home than they could have one year ago while keeping their monthly payment unchanged. This translates into nearly $32,000 more buying power. And the 32 is because 320000 is the, the median nationwide. Nationwide home price. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So... so We've talked about it. We've said this many times. I just like the way they put that quote. It's, it really it was very it, concise, yeah. but we waited so long for it. I'm not sure anybody was still we, listening. We lost a bunch yeah, of we people lost as him. I droned on about <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Black Knight. Um, you know, so if you want to find out a lot more information, stats, information about being a home buyer, information about selling your house. You know, not everybody has sold a house before when they call us. We have a ton of information on our website. 
more than you'll find anywhere that's really specific because a lot of what we wrote or we made sure that if it's there, it's specific to our market, right? Welcome home, abq.com. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of chuckling because, yeah, it's because I maintain the website and I love that stuff. So I put it all on there. Right. I put a couple different projects on there this week. In fact, let me talk about that. So, so market, market data wise, actually, let me pull up the website. Um, Actually, our website's behind us here if you're watching this on video. Uh, WelcomeHomeABQ.com. There is a tab that's right there. It says Market. And I put a couple of the, a couple things that I've been tracking. One of them is uh, the, the supply, meaning the number of homes on the market and where, where that's been trending. So I pulled up some data looking at actual active, like, homes on the market not how many there were last month not what sold last month because i want to know real time what's happening in the market i don't want to know what happened last month and unfortunately most of the the, the real estate market data we get everything that the uh the the news organizations put out is usually backwards looking right you know case schiller indexes you know a couple months behind we don't care what happened two months ago oh, i shouldn't say that but but anyway this is real time how many homes on the market every single week and and you know one of the things was just obviously you know the over thanksgiving there was a decline in the number of homes on the market not a lot but there was uh, the other thing i'm tracking is luxury market and let's talk about that tracy because the luxury market it's it is i, I don't again it's like how do you come up with with terms for something that just is just so unprecedented in right. in the trend. Right. Yeah, we I think we talked about those stats last week on this show, but you know, they continue. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, if you look at the the number of luxury homes, meaning homes $500,000 above in the Albuquerque area, we had, let me see, November, we had a 85% increase in the number of homes over $500,000 that sold this year versus last November. Okay, now I'm back to backwards looking. Um, but, yeah. if you, but if you annualize that, if you look at it over the 12, last 12 months, we've had a, a 38% increase in the number of luxury homes selling. So the first stat was month over month. Right. It was November last year compared to November right. this year. But the rolling 12 months is that 38 percent and so it, it's it's interesting and and you know a lot of people ask me it's like well where are these luxury buyers coming from why are why is that market is so hot and i don't know what how would you answer that tracy i would say a lot of them are from here yep you know everybody that you know reads the news <laughs> thinks that they're coming from out of state right but we have a lot of people that are just getting into and right sizing their home they're yeah. going you know it, we the interest rates are great the house we're in will sell really well yep. i don't have to worry about it and that's part of our topic today which is how do i sell a house and buy a house at the same time Perfect. so we're going to talk about that so i think a lot of people are taking advantage of that the interest rates are so great that they're moving into a house that's probably significantly more than value wise than the home they're in but their monthly payment is not going to be significantly different because of the interest rates unless they've refinanced in the last year which if they're planning to sell hopefully they're not refinancing this year because you don't want to refinance right before you sell the house you're no, it's not, no doesn't usually, make financial usually, sense. I mean, it depends. I mean, it, it, there's usually an 18 month, two year window, you know, to, to, recoup, to, to recoup if you're if you're somewhere around a one percent interest uh, um, advantage. Right. So, so Tracy, uh, l l let me let me introduce. OK, is because you're the you're the expert on. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. The. Buying a home, selling a home at the same time. We get a lot of questions, especially now with the the ultra low number of homes on the market. It's it's challenging. So how do we do that? I can't. You know, most people can't just go buy a home and still have another home that they own. They have to, you know, move that mortgage to another property. So what would you? First off, what would you say to, to somebody that's thinking of selling, but they don't want to go through that? Um, 
what would you tell them? What would be the first piece of advice you give them? First piece of advice, I would say, uh, let's not sugarcoat it. It's tricky to do it. It it almost always works out like we want, but it it happens. Um, what I've seen statistically, Tigo, and this is you know using that word statistics for you, statistically, seventy one percent of the people that are buying a house, a second house, a first house. Um, second house, right? They own a house and yep. they're, they're having to do it simultaneously. They can't afford to get the mortgage for their other home, their new home, without selling their current home. So, so yeah, it's challenging. On, the takeaway on that, though, is it's a very common thing. Very common. Yeah. And, and, of course, we deal with it all the time. Obviously, there's extra logistics involved, you know, trying to move out of one house. We're trying to get ready to move into another house. It's, right. You know, th there, there's all that. But... Um, what about the financing piece? I mean, obviously, you know, if you can't buy the home without selling your home, how does that work? So a lot of times people need the money from the one home to be able to close on the other. Yeah. So that means you would need to sell your home first and be out of it right. before you close on your new home and move into it. So there's that lag in the middle there. So it's... So to, I, I'm going to interrupt you. I know. I promise I wouldn't interrupt you. It's just about impossible, isn't it? <laughs> um, is I was waiting the, for it. I, I was going to just say, talk about the simultaneous closing and how that works, where the title company is handling all that money transfer. Right. So it's possible to close the same day on both properties. You go in the morning, you sign paperwork to sell your home. It gets funded and recorded by 11, 12. You're, right after you sign to sell your home, you go right to title and may hope may, maybe the same company, not always. Well, I've seen it happen at the same time at the yeah. same table with the same escrow. Okay. Officer. Now we're going to sign these forms, yeah. right? So the, the sell has to fund and mm -hmm. record before the funds are available for the buy side. But a lot of times we can get it to happen that same afternoon so that the sell happens in the morning and by mid afternoon, late afternoon, the buy happens. Now, most people, you know, that's pretty stressful. Yeah. Think about, I'm all packed up. I've got the kids and the dogs in the car and I'm waiting to get the keys to my new home and the moving truck is waiting and everything's going. So there's ways we try to minimize, minimize the stress, right? We try to get pre-occupancy or post-occupancy, either post-occupancy at the house you're selling for a few days or pre-occupancy at the home you're buying for a few days. Um, there's, you know, pods where you can have all of your things packed up. They hold them at the pod facility yeah. until you're ready for them so that the truck isn't literally waiting with your things. Yeah. Um, and, and lots of other strategies that work to help facilitate a buy so, and sell at the same time. So what you're saying, there are obviously extra logistics. Right. Yeah. And getting a house, right? So a lot of times people say, well, how do I get an offer accepted on a new home when the, I need to make it contingent upon selling my current home? Explain contingent just right. for, for people listening. So we make offers that if you have to sell to be able to buy, we make offers with an extra addendum attached to the form that says, this purchase is contingent upon my current home selling, to make it simple, right? And the, the seller, you know, preferably when we're making that offer, your house is already under contract to sell, but sometimes it's not even on the market yet. So we have in the contract, in that addendum, we put together, you know, let's say your house isn't even on the market yet and we're putting an offer in on a new house that needs to be contingent on the sale, right? So what we do in that uh, addendum is we put down how many days from accepted contract we have to get that home on the market. And we usually are ready to go. We just don't want it on the market until we know you found a house, right? Because we, right now, your house is probably in a better price range if you're moving up to luxury uh, or even if you're going same price point, right? Different, yeah. different home. Um, it's, it's important to, you know, n know the details of how we do it so that it works for you and makes sense for you, because that's just one little nuance of yeah. how do you sell yeah. and buy? So a couple things I want to address is one of the the services we offer here at, at Venturi Realty is the, the guaranteed sale. I know we've been accused of like this whole thing, like we're, we're putting something out there. Oh, no, they can't do that. No, this is exactly what the guaranteed sale is for. Exactly. Right? So we, we will 
I mean, we only we we can just make an offer on a house somebody wants to sell, but it's yeah. perfect because we can go and meet with you ahead of time and say, okay, we believe your house will sell for this price. We will offer you X, and you give us fifty nine days or whatever you want. Uh, to get your home sold. <laughs> it used to be 59 days, but in today's market, you know, with median days on market at five. Of course, right. that, that's not every know, home, no, though, is selling like home. that. Of course, of course. So um, we guarantee that if the house doesn't sell, well, you can move forward, get another home yeah. under contract. We work, get your home sold. But if it doesn't sell, while we're waiting for your other home to close, we guarantee that we'll buy it. It's a backup offer. It's a backup option if if for whatever reason it just doesn't sell or, you know, it, it's a backstop. And most people want to net the most and they want of the course. highest and best. Our price is going to be a little bit below that because traditionally we just put it on the market and sell it. Yeah. So we incur all the closing costs and the holding fees and things, but it's not a... Uh, uh, one of those telephone pole, I'll buy your house Yeah, 30% sign. below market. Yeah. No, that's not or, what it is. Or 50. Yeah. I know people who've called and it's like half price, they yeah. want to buy your house. So yeah. no, it's not like that. Our goal though is to help you get into a new home as stress-free as possible. You've said new home a couple times, but I want to address, you know, you're saying just a, a, a different, different home. home. Right. But let's talk about new construction because the, 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 this is a uh, really common in the new construction because especially now unless the home is built and available that first off there's not a lot of those available right. in albuquerque right now and but, but construction times are what six seven eight months right now nine right. months i've heard right for so, pulte dr horton abrazo twilight westway yep home all those great we're not talking a custom buy yeah, a piece yeah. of land and yeah, hire no, no, a builder no, that, those a, would take much longer that's a different animal yeah right so antigo let's just tell the story we yeah. one of them and we bought a couple houses this year right well coming two, up on it and one in two particular things. i want you to tell that story i just want to address though that that is you know an ideal situation for somebody because now you have the time you have the time you know you know, you can gauge a market, talk to us about, you know, how long we think it's going to sell, what it's going to sell for. So you can gauge a market and decide when to put it on the market before your, your home is ready. That when you're moving into when is you're moving ready. In. The right. other option that you want to talk about, and I'll let you tell that story because it's a great well, story. We, we had a situation earlier this year. Mm -hmm. The client um, worked with us to buy a new construction home, picked out a lot, mm -hmm. picked out a floor plan, got to go to the design center and pick out the color of the yep. cabinets and the counters and the flooring and everything. Yep. So fun. But she wanted to know very solidly that her house was going to be sold because she needed to sell to buy and just wanted that peace of mind. So she asked us just to go ahead and buy it and rent it back to her so that's what we did so we bought her house and she continued to live there for mm -hmm. eight months yep. while her house was being built and um when her house was done she she gave us 30 days notice that my house was going to be yeah. done which yeah. we knew because yeah. we were working with her and uh she was so happy about that situation it just worked it was, so it well it was a win-win right it was we a always win -win. want a win-win yeah 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 so plus we gave her a little reduced rent well, there is that too. There is that too. Not more than more than a little. Anyway, yeah. so well, it was a little. Um, so, if you know you're thinking about selling and you're or, and you're kind of on the fence, she's like, "Well, where do I go? How do I find a home?" And you want to know about this this whole idea of contingent offers and selling and buying at the same time. Just reach out to us, Venturi Realty Group, of Keller Williams Realty. Four four eight eighty eight. 88 nice and simple Four four eight eighty eight eighty eight. we should probably write a jingle about that tico we could do that maybe ed eddie could sing it for us yeah there I you think go that would be yeah well he does have that opera voice he I could know. do it he's awesome so let's uh, okay change the subject i want to talk about 2021 lots of predictions out there in in the real estate world that i just wanted to share from the experts and i'm going to say air quote experts because you know, we've. I think some of us has, have lost a little faith in uh, experts this year in in 2020. But let me go through just some of the topics yeah, yeah. of what the forecasters. There's just some big topics yeah, out absolutely. there, right? So one is interest rates. Yep. Two is foreclosures. Yep. Three is home prices. Yep. 
for is challenges. I'm just going to say yep to everything you say. Like inventory levels. That's it. Okay. That's, that's my advice for, for a, a happy marriage. Just kidding. <laughs> Um, okay, so first and foremost, let's talk about mortgage interest rates, Tracy, and what the experts are saying. Okay. Um, so we, I, I think, and everybody knows, mortgage interest rates right now, December 2020, are at just these historically low levels. Last week, we were joking about, um, well, another headline that says all-time low mortgage rates. You know, it's like... Uh, we, we don't think we're going to be saying that ever again. I, and last week we said it again. Again. Rates are still under 3% right yeah. now for most borrowers yeah, yeah. with decent credit, right? Yep, absolutely. And, and one just uh, side note on that is, there, believe it or not, there are still a bunch of people out there that could benefit from refinancing that have not refinanced. Um, that's a lot of, of just um, lost money, really. Right. If you're sitting at an interest rate of like four or above right now and you're not planning to sell in the next two years. Even 3.75, 3.875 maybe. Maybe. You got to run the numbers. You got to you got to do the you got to do the math and make sure it makes sense. But, do the math is scary for a lot of us, Tigo. Uh, no, Careful. Math, math is great. Spreadsheets. They're my favorite. OK, so. Projections. Let me just go through these. Uh, by the end of 2021, I'll just give you these. This is it. So Freddie Mac, obviously a big, you know, organization. They're saying three percent. Fannie Mae, the other one, they're saying 2.8. Uh, Mortgage Bankers Association, they're saying 3.3, which is interesting. Uh, National Association of Realtors, they're saying 3.2. The, the the takeaway is. They're not going to five. Nobody, this year. nobody. I mean, nobody is projecting, and I'm talking the 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 big economists, Goldman Sachs, that do all their projection as well. Nobody is predicting interest rates to go up substantially. What about home prices? Home prices. Let's talk about that. And that's the big, that's the big one. Everybody wonders, and and you know, there's this whole thing about. You know, all these forbearance, all these people that are delinquent on their mortgage, are we going to have this flood of homes that drive home prices down? Well, this is what the experts are saying. Um, Zellman and Associates, Ivy Zellman and that group, they're, they're one of the big, um, uh, I don't know what you'd call them. Uh, I've real never estate, even heard of them. Real estate consulting firms. Yeah, that's kind of wonky stuff. Zellman. But yeah, Zellman and Associates. Um, they're saying over the next 12 months... Remember to silence your phone before going on the radio. Um, is uh, they're saying five point nine percent home price? You know, over the next twelve appreciation. months, appreciation. Appreciation. Yeah. Um, Realtor.com. Uh, they're saying five point seven. National Association of Realtor, a little more conservative, four point five percent. Freddie Mac, two point three percent. Fannie Mae, two point one. Mortgage Bankers Association, interesting. They're saying two percent. They were a little bit. Uh, they were kind Higher of an outlier. The yeah, rate. they were kind of an outlier on the interest rate as well. The, and, and then Core Logic, which is again one of those big data analytics companies, they they're saying one point nine. They're the lowest. And this is across the whole country, though. Th this is this national. is not Albuquerque. No, no this yeah. is nationally, and if in the localized stuff. I think it's going to be higher locally. I was going to say, okay, let's talk about what we think for us here in New Mexico. We're gonna, I believe we're going to do this. We got to. We got to save this. I believe it'll be higher. We got to save this recording so we can go back. The and highest see how of we did. all those yeah. forecasters was five point nine. Yeah. I would say we're going to be above that. I agree. I, I agree. And we've talked about on the show many times why. I mean, in a nutshell, there is not enough homes on the market. There are yeah. not enough homes yeah. on the market. And interest rates are low. And the next topic, foreclosures and forbearance. Wow. So if you see a headline that talks about, you know, delinquencies and foreclosures and forbearance, remember that there are so many layers to that onion that whatever you're reading probably isn't telling you the entire story on that. Um, and, and I don't, you know, it's one of those topics that you just don't even want to get into because there's so many levels to it. I'll, I'll just give some 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 kind of some high level stuff on that, Tracy, which is that the 
all the experts, again, all the experts, <laughs> nobody is saying that we're going to have a foreclosure crisis or a flood of foreclosures that drive down home prices in 2021. Nobody is saying that. That's that's kind of the, the headline. Uh, and these are these are the economists. These are not political people. They're just economists. They're just looking at the data. Right. Right. And these these are also people that that did get it right back in 2006, seven, when, you know, they were predicting, predicting that, you know, we're going to have we got a we got a problem coming. Right. Which which we which ended up, most which we did didn't believe. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, different yeah, topic. Let's, let's not go there. Um, uh, uh, just a couple high level reasons why is home equity, embedded home equity is at just historic all time highs, which means if people are forced to sell, they're they're not necessarily uh, going to be underwater, meaning they're going to just sell. They're not going to just give it back to the bank. And that's what happened in 2008, 9, 10 is so many people were upside down on their mortgages that they couldn't afford to sell. So they just handed back the keys and said, I'm done. So that was so smart. You you uh, embedded home equity. I was like Hold sitting on. here Am going, I wow, this? Wait, you, you said are I'm very really smart. smart. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that I'm gonna... sounded so good. Oh, good, so, good. So, you know, the analogy, you know, you buy a, a new car and a few years later, you're still paying on it and you go and you want to sell it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what you owe on it is higher than what you owe, right? Yeah. That's kind of the situation that we were in back in 2008, 2009, 2010. People didn't have, you know, money, equity in their home. Right. They couldn't sell. They couldn't sell it and get a price that would pay off the under underlying loan. So now people have a lot of equity and they can sell and walk away with money in their pocket. I was listening to Lawrence Hewn, who's the chief economist at the National Association of Realtors. Smart NAR. guy. Yeah, he's, he's he likes spreadsheets and oh, and he's like he's too. like one of my you know got idols. Um, but he you know he made a, a a good point, or this is his quote actually. It says, um, "Any foreclosure increases will likely be quickly absorbed by the market. We will." Uh, we, excuse me, it will not lead to any price declines. So even if we have some foreclosures where people, you know, walk away from their home, we are at such a critical low number of homes on the market that yep. it would take. It would take uh, a huge change. Uh, it would take a huge change in demand, which could probably demand would only change if interest rates be, uh, spike up a lot, which again, we just talked about that. That doesn't look likely. Um, so any any foreclosure activity we see is most likely uh, just going to be absorbed by the market. It's not going to it's not going to lead to lower prices. And that's what everybody is predicting. Right. Right. right now. And we've had home buyers ask us, I'm worried. Should I be worried about yeah. buying? And all of a sudden there's going to be foreclosures and the value of my house is down we're not the foreclosure piece is not something that we feel like is going to affect the the values no, around no and our i've market. talked to a lot of people and you know i know a lot of invest real estate investors tracy and i you know we do real estate and investing and i and i keep hearing people saying stuff like uh, well i'm just waiting for the deals yeah and i my answer to them is well you're going to be waiting because it doesn't look like they're coming anytime soon and just on timing on that right now we have this you know forbearance thing and and just let me highlight one thing, how the forbearance is so different. Uh, we, we didn't have this back then, right? We didn't have it back in right. uh, 20, 2008. You know, the government is jumped in big time. And, you know, we can debate, Eddie, if that's good or bad. But the government has jumped in big time to help homeowners. And it looks like that whole forbearance thing may be even pushed through uh, 2021. So well, I think people see... need all sorts of help and yeah. whatever they can get that, that, uh, themselves on. And if it gives them an advantage, uh, they can see to it personally, if that's something that they yeah. want to do. So if it's, it's just another option, it's another opportunity for them to look at it a different way. I mean, at this point when you've, you know, got the situation, uh, set up where, you know, private businesses and everybody can't even, you know, let's just say, you know, 
uh, earn a living. It's necess- It's almost impossible to right now underwrite somebody who's self-employed. Yeah. Uh, you have to have a state uh, federal worker or somebody who's in a COVID essential uh, business. I mean, that literally cuts off 70% of the market. I'm glad that the luxury market is still doing well. Uh, retirees are still getting it. We've got amazing rates and all that kind of stuff. But you know, if that's something else that people can do to stay in their homes, I think it's great. Uh, at this point, you know, we've been sort of uh, put into a situation where, you know, you beggars can't be choosers necessarily. And if that's yeah. what you have to do to stay in your home, because, you know, that's the first order, that's what you got to do. And yep, I'm, just you do. Glad that, I'm just glad that it's there. Yeah. <laughs> you I, know, I, it, I, there's almost no value judgment anymore on any of this stuff. You know, yeah, if you yeah. something you have to do, well, here's an opportunity. This is what we're going to do to get through it. And and I, I don't know that there's any um, judgment at all at this point. You know, no. people have to do what they've got to do. That's a great way to put it, Eddie. And and I, I think you're right. And I think, you know, obviously you do the politics. We don't do politics here in this right. show. But but I you know, it's it's you just gotta do what you gotta do. And um, And a lot of people are in a position that it's through no fault of their own. They oh, of course. Right. they just became unemployed out of the blue, you know. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we all can't. Out of it's the tough, Wuhan. But, but there you go. So we're all in this uh, together, so to speak, but we're all in this separately and nobody can really judge upon uh, uh, right. everybody else. And I'm just glad there's options and or, or arrows in the quiver, so to speak, that uh, are able to yeah. go ahead and fire there's away at yep. some problem. Tigo yep. Tracy, thank you so much for being here. 448-8888. That's 448-8888 or welcomehomeabq.com. That's welcomehomeabq.com. They will help you folks. Make no mistake about it. Uh, They are the best for a reason. They've got uh, a team of, I don't know, 20 plus, whatever.